the most misogynistic, narcissistic environment in history. Um, it is filled with, it is a double standard from the time you sign the dotted line to the time you get out of the industry, if, if that's even possible. Starting with the fact that women have to be stick thin stereotypes and sexy with hat, with two pieces of clothes on and over sexualized to sell records and to be marketable. Where men could be 400 pounds, not healthy, overweight, and still sell millions millions of records. My mom cusses at us, you know, she would call us like and, no and stuff like that. I used to hide all the time. I would go in closets and stay there for hours because I wanted someone to find me. And I would do that all the time. I would get literally inside of bags and hide. I thought that was fun. I experienced my mother as a bully. It makes me feel hurt. I don't know anymore. I don't know. I don't know where it starts. I don't just want it to end. Yeah then why can't I get over, why, why, did, why does it affect me so much? I'm scared to let you know that I'm scared because I don't want anyone to know that I'm scared because like you, I feel that that's a weakness. What happens when a powerhouse singer's life is marred by scandal, heartbreak, and a sprinkle of drama? Welcome to the roller coaster ride that is Selena Johnson. From explosive feuds with co-stars, I start to roll up my high heel because he started to walk towards. And the, so then I started to curse him out. To the heartbreak of failed relationships. Her life is like a reality TV show we just can't look away from. So grab your popcorn as we dive into the messy life of Selena Johnson. Born on September 2, 1976 in Harvey, Illinois, Selena Johnson was practically destined for the spotlight. With a blues singer for a father, Syl Johnson, Is it because I'm black? And a mother who broke barriers as the first black female police commissioner in Harvey, she was surrounded by talent and ambition. But it wasn't all glitz and glamour. Selena faced her fair share of struggles growing up. One of the most iconic moments in Selena's career was her collaboration with Kanye West on his hit song, All Falls Down. Her smooth, emotive vocals took the track to new heights, resonating with fans worldwide. The collaboration not only introduced her to a broader audience, but also showcased her ability to shine alongside some of the biggest names in music. Selena continued to release music that spoke to the complexities of life and love. Songs like it's perfectly worthless. from her Chapter 6 Couples Therapy album were heart-wrenching portrayals of relationships falling apart, capturing the pain of heartbreak with chilling precision. She also explored themes of empowerment in tracks like featuring Tweed, where she encouraged women to reclaim their self-worth after experiencing betrayal and hurt. She battled vocal nodules that required surgery and speech therapy and dealt with the emotional fallout from her parents' divorce when she was just 15. But instead of letting those challenges define her, Selena channeled her pain into her music. She liked loving herself, which brought many, many she signed with Jive Records in the late 90s, releasing her debut album, Love Hangover. Your sweet love hangover is hard to find. In 1998. However, it was her sophomore effort, Chapter One, Love, Pain, and Forgiveness, that truly put her on the map in 2001. With hits like I Am Your Woman. I'm your woman. She quickly established herself as an R&B force to be reckoned with. Now let's get into the juicy details. Grab your tea because this is where it gets spicy. Let's talk about R. Kelly. Yes, the infamous R&B crooner. Selena's career was launched with his help when he penned some tracks for her early albums. But as we all know, R. Kelly's reputation has taken a nosedive amid serious allegations. This association has haunted Selena over the years. In interviews, 
She often finds herself defending her connection to him while trying to carve out her own identity in the industry. Can you imagine being constantly asked about someone else's drama? Talk about awkwardness. In one interview clip, she says, I had to learn to separate my artistry from his actions. We both have known Robert for many, many years. Yeah. And it's difficult when you speak on, to be me speaking about R. Kelly, you know, and right. it's difficult for you yeah, yeah. to be you to right, speak R. Right. Kelly because you can't get it right, you can't get it wrong. People try to penalize you just for knowing him, mm -hmm. you know, and what they're what they're looking for is answers because what what's happening in in the world is he had all these fans, all these people that loved him and loved mm -hmm. his music, and so they feel wrong. They feel wrong for loving his music and they feel betrayed. But I'm I just want to say that it's nothing wrong to have loved his songs for all those years because you were connected to the true meaning of what love was and and. Dance dancing and being happy, although he has done some things that are outrageous, outrageous and unacceptable. Uh, there's no way that you can you can get around it. The music at the time for us, don't let go of what that meant for you. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. the music meant something good for you. You, you feel me? Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't matter um, where he was with it. It's, it matters about what you got from it. So you can't let go of that. Don't allow yourself to be uh, responsible for loving music because you don't know who did what when any of these songs, if you want to be honest all right exactly. so then that, that's that but just for me personally he was my friend you know and so it's like if you grew up with a friend and then you found out later that they were an axe murderer you yeah. would be hurt yeah. right? you know what I'm saying and you would feel away you would feel sad for both parties not just these innocent women but you would also be sad for them because obviously there's some type of turmoil that had to be happening within him personally for mm -hmm. him to be able to do yeah. these things yes. Selena has also made headlines for her controversial comments regarding R. Kelly. After his conviction on multiple charges, she publicly stated that he shouldn't be in jail, but rather in an insane asylum. She described him as a narcissist who needs mental help rather than incarceration. He needs to be in a straitjacket, she said during an episode of Cocktails with Queens. This statement ignited a firestorm on social media, with many fans questioning her loyalty to the victims of Kelly's actions. Some even suggested that her comments were out of touch with the reality of the situation. In 2012, Selena joined the cast of R&B Divas Atlanta, and let me tell you, drama was practically guaranteed. Feel crazy, or I'm, I'm your sister in song. Well, I don't think any of us feel like Michael shouldn't be here because he's he a bad time. It's clearly not a coincidence that Nikki and I were just talking about this very same situation earlier today. I think that it was meant to be. You're going to have to learn at some point to be by yourself. We want you to shine. One of the most talked about moments was her explosive feud with Kiki Wyatt. Their disagreements were so intense that they almost came to blows. In one memorable episode, they clashed over everything from personal issues to professional rivalries. Fans were glued to their screens as they watched their fiery showdown unfold. Who doesn't love a good cat fight? During one heated exchange, Selena exclaimed, I'm not here to play nice. I'm not angry. I'm very, very calm, bitch. What you've done to these women is a sin, and there's a special place in hell for a like you. The truth is, you're the common denominator. Everybody knows that you're a hot mess. You're going to look a mess with those black gums and all. And speaking of drama, let's not forget about Selena's love life. She married Marcus Betts in 2000, but divorced him in 2007 after a tumultuous relationship that included him managing her career. Awkward. Imagine having your ex as your manager. That's a recipe for disaster. Later, she married Kawan Garris, but their relationship also faced challenges. The couple welcomed two sons together, but ultimately parted ways. It seems like love hasn't been easy for our girl, Selena. In one candid moment on R&B Divas, she shared, love is beautiful, but can be messy too. We were not meant to be. We were in love because of circumstance. At what point in this first marriage are you realizing that I made a mistake? I don't think it's because he loved me so much. I think it was because traditionally that's what he saw his parents do. One of the most shocking moments came during her appearance on Marriage Boot Camp Reality Stars. Know how to communicate effectively and it causes all kinds of issues. In a tense lie detector test, Selena admitted to emotional cheating on her husband, Kawan Garris. 
When asked if she had ever been unfaithful, she paused before responding with a hesitant, yes. The room was silent. She clarified that it wasn't physical cheating, but more about text message stuff that had caused tension in their relationship. Talk about a bombshell. Even the show's counselors were taken aback by her honesty. Selena explained, The question threw me because it wasn't our issue coming through the door. In 2022, Selena stirred up controversy again when she publicly called out fellow singer Jaheem during an interview. She described an incident where they nearly got into a physical altercation over some heated words exchanged about their music careers. So he's over Giz the shoulder. Now Giz is the engineer. He starts arguing with Giz because he because he's tell, trying to tell Giz what to do. So Giz is like, man, I, I got it. He goes, man, you get mad at me? I'm trying to learn something here. You're trying to block my learning. So we're all looking around like, whoa. He goes, I said can't be no copies now. I said, I don't know who you talking to. You know, this is my studio session, so I'm going to get a copy. Then he goes, well, take my voice off then. I was like, okay. You know, and then, he, man, KGC, this is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? We getting copies out of here, people copying up. You know, people, his whole thing was people copying off the song. And then I start picking up my bags. I said, well, you know, you can work it out when I'm gone. I said, uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna get my copy and go, <laughs> go about my business, right? So then he sits down, he goes, you got an attitude, right? So I looked at him, I said, well, chalk it up is PMS. My period's coming soon, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty turned up inside anyway. Right? Then he says something ignorant like, who you think you are, Ashanti? No shade to Ashanti, cause she was popping at that time. She had all the hits, right? I said, no, I don't think I'm Ashanti. I think I'm Selena Johnson in my studio session. <laughs> this is what's happening. So, but I'm laughing, so he's getting madder. So he start walking up on me. Now, I'm from Chicago, which if you do your research, is a little more out of control. If you walk up on you, you walk up on a person in Chicago, that's an automatic approach. So while I'm putting my my bags together, I I start to roll up my high heel because he started to walk towards. And the, so then I started to curse him out. I had to give him in this hand and I raised my boot. Mother effer, who the F you talking to? Cussed him out and then I lunged at him, but then I got caught by one of the trendsetters who is also from Chicago because he knew that things were about to get weird because he started walking up on me like I'm like in, like a bee in the streets. So basically I almost this dude in the studio. So Trent's head has had to pick me up. I'm cussing all the way over his shoulder. Mother ever, da, da, da. He cussing back. I'm cussing at him. So he pulls me into the booth. Trent's head's put me in. KG comes in the booth. He's like, oh my God. He's like, what is going on? I'm like, you got this mother effer in my session. I'm going off, right? So KG is like, he wrong with Selena. He off the chain. I didn't know he was going to turn up like this. I didn't know. They knew he was. He could turn up, but they didn't know he was going to turn up like this. So watch this. So I'm, I'm going I'm talking to KG, calming down. This dude comes in the studio. He comes in the, the room and sits down like this, like regular, like nothing ever happened. And he goes, yeah, man, see, because, you know, I, you know, I, I, I be tired of people stealing from us, you know, like, like R. Kelly stole that in them jeans idea. So then I thought, oh, he's very insane. This is mental illness at its finest. That doesn't have anything to do with a song called More in my studio session. Fans couldn't get enough of this drama. It's like watching a soap opera unfold live on social media. Who needs scripted TV when you have real-life feuds? Now, let's dive into the family dynamics because they're just as juicy. First off, she experienced a lot of childhood trauma, especially from her mother, Brenda Thompson. I'm sure this happened over and over again, even when I was very small, but my mom cusses at us. You know, she would call us, like, and, you know, and stuff like that. I used to have all the time. I would go in closets and stay there for hours because I wanted someone to find me. And I would do that all the time. I would get literally inside of bags and hide. I thought that was fun. Well, I mean, if I was being called and I didn't answer, that was considered bad. She viewed that as disrespectful. She views having an opinion as being disrespectful, even at 36. And this is where the problem comes in for me because I feel like as a grown woman with children and bills, I should be able to have <laughs> an opinion and a say about how I think things should run in my life. I've built a wall because I'm always ready for her to say something bad to me. 
I'm ready all the time. And when I feel like I'm being bullied mm -hmm. or backed up against the wall, I attack. This went on all into adulthood, which led to her having an emotional one-on-one -on -one with her mother on Oprah. I'm scared to let you know that I'm scared because I don't want anyone to know that I'm scared because like you, I feel that that's a weakness. I'm unhappy and I'm sad <coughs> and I'm pissed about it because I don't want to be this way or feel this way and I'm mad at you because you increase those feelings in me when I fight them every day. And I just want you to say you're enough the way you are. And I feel that way about you. I want you to know that I love you so much. Do you know that I wake up in the morning every day and think to myself, what can I do today and make her feel better about where she is so she don't want to leave me? I don't want you to leave. I want you to be here. I want you to get healthy. I want you to be happy. And I just want you to, I just want you to, I just want you to get better. I just want my mother, I want a mother, and I, I don't want to be scared. I thought that you, out of all the children, hated me the most. I don't hate you. I love you so because much. We all do. And you're killing us take by it in, killing yourself. Take it handle growing up with a famous father, which meant high expectations and pressure. While Seal Johnson had his own struggles in the music industry, he initially discouraged Selena from pursuing a career in music due to its challenges. Can you imagine being told by your father that you shouldn't follow your dreams? Ouch. Despite their rocky relationship at times, Seal eventually came around and supported her endeavors. In fact, he even collaborated with her on projects like Rebirth of Soul. I wanna stay around, so make me yours. But family dynamics can be complicated. Selena has opened up about how the pressures of fame affected her relationships with family members. Selena has faced significant personal challenges as well. In recent interviews, she opened up about the devastating losses she endured over the past few years. Her father passed away, and she also lost close friends to suicide and cancer. I was drinking every day, she confessed. My best friend's daughter killed herself. My makeup artist died of cancer. It was just too much. These tragedies have deeply impacted her mental health and have been a driving force behind her new music. She revealed that for years, she felt inadequate due to societal beauty standards that dictated how women should look. The industry makes you think we have to be almost perfect. She said in an interview discussing her single, Monsters in the Closet. Because I fear the monsters in the closet. She emphasized that her journey toward self-acceptance has been long and difficult, stating, I'm not a size two, and I'm okay with not being a two. You know, I, I did the dating thing too, long time, but I kept getting it wrong. So I had gotten so tired of getting my heart broken and it just not working out. My, my husband that I'm with now, he um, reached out to a friend to date me. And on the first date, I decided I'm not doing this dressing up thing. So I put on a jogging suit and on the booty, it said dangerous. So we went down <laughs> to the cheesecake factory. I was just very, yes. just overly being myself yeah. to try to see why are you here? He liked it. And I looked at that man and I said, look here. What I'm looking for is X, Y, Z. Um, so if that's not what you're looking for, and you can go your separate way, and I'll go my separate way, and we be all right. And here we are, 15 years later. <laughs> In her book, The Wait is Over, Selena candidly shares her struggles with body image and mental health issues stemming from childhood bullying and pressures within the industry. This honesty has resonated with many fans who appreciate her authenticity. While Selena has faced numerous challenges, one of the most poignant moments came when she revealed her struggles with mental health and self-acceptance. 
Women have to be stick thin, skinny or whatever, you know, to get to be successful. And men don't. We know that. But that does something to us mentally. And it did something to be mentally and physically and emotionally. And, and the book that I wrote talks about that and how it just caused me to just be, you know, just be crazy about and obsessive about things. Just really hurt myself doing a lot of different things that weren't healthy. I hope that young women can can learn something from the book, you know, because it, it's just really the, the, the focus is to learn to love yourself at whatever state you're, you are. After years of battling body image issues and public scrutiny about her weight and appearance, she bravely shared her journey towards self-love through music and writing. But just yeah. like a man does, you know what I'm saying? And not like, not be a man to do it, but be a lady and ask for things that we want to and be able yeah. to speak our mind. In interviews like those featured on The Breakfast Club and The Real, she opened up about how these struggles impacted her personal life and career choices. It's heartbreaking to see someone so talented face such adversity, but it also makes us root for her even more. Despite all the chaos surrounding her life, Selena continues to thrive creatively. She recently released The Making of a Woman. You gotta think like a woman which accompanies a docu-series showcasing not only her music, but also the harsh realities women face in the industry today. She serves as an executive producer alongside family members, keeping it all in the family. In addition to this project, despite all the turmoil in her life, Selena is still pushing forward with new projects. She recently signed exclusively with Universal Attractions Agency, and is set to release her final solo album titled Legacy on August 30th. This album is not just another collection of songs. It's a heartfelt tribute to her late father, Syl Johnson. The album is a celebration of his life and artistry, she shared. Additionally, Selena is co-hosting a new talk show called Crowned. <laughs> the one and only. Yeah. Well, Selena. They had, Selena Johnson. They had needed, somebody has said they needed some music. <laughs> where she discusses various topics related to womanhood and empowerment alongside Vivica A. Fox and others. As of now, Selena Johnson's net worth is estimated at around $2 million, a testament to her hard work and resilience in an industry filled with ups and downs. So what will Selena be remembered for? Beyond her powerful voice and catchy hits like All Falls Down, she will likely be remembered for her authenticity and willingness to confront difficult topics, whether through music or personal storytelling. In conclusion, Selena Johnson's life is a testament to resilience amid chaos a true reflection of what it means to navigate fame while dealing with personal demons and public scrutiny. From scandalous feuds to heartfelt revelations about body image and mental health, she embodies the complexities of modern celebrity life. So next time you hear one of her songs or see her on TV, remember, behind that powerful voice lies a story filled with triumphs and tribulations that makes Selena Johnson not just an artist, but also an inspiration for many navigating their own messy lives. So there you have it, the messy yet fabulous life of Selena Johnson. Keep your eyes peeled for more updates because this diva isn't done yet.